Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Today we got our last session. Yes. Finally, we're, we're, we're closing this and we're doing fasting. This is our last session on diversion. And um, but I want to get into it. Mm -hmm. I want to get into it. Um, fasting, I believe that that's something that's um, very ignored in, in Christian circles. Um, you would hear a lot of sermons um, that deal with prayer with reading the word of god with worship i just don't remember so many sermons about fasting it's not something that's emphasized so th th that's why i'm getting into it you know mm. so because uh, we got a lot to talk about right yeah we do yeah so it's something that's really not emphasized and i mean i understand why right we love our food and as, as you can see we're we're both chunky mm. So <laughs> we love our food, um, but if if it's part of part of our faith, and if it has spiritual benefits to it, it's important to us, right? And um, to me, my perspective on fasting is basically where you abstain from food or water or both, um, and you pursue God's favor and presence. That, mm -hmm. that's that's how i'm seeing it or or sometimes you might be seeking something and and you're you're showing how serious you are before the lord yeah and saying lord i will abstain from food or liquids and i want to do that because i'm really uh desperate for an answer yeah yeah and we also see examples of um sometimes it's uh Sometimes when we don't have enough faith in our life, we can overcome that with fasting to kind of make up for that lack of mm -hmm. faith in our life. Because uh, sometimes that happens. Sometimes because of the situations we're going through, because of the hardships we're going through, um, we lack faith. Yeah. Our faith yeah. is not strong enough. And sometimes what we need is fasting coupled with prayer to kind of amplify that faith that we have just to make it strong enough to go through what we're going through. And yeah. um, we see that in the Bible, um, like, for example, in Matthew 17, uh, verses 18 to 21, when uh, Jesus says, And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from, from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief. For assuredly I say to you, If you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there. And it will move and nothing will be impossible for you however this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting mm. so we, we see that sometimes there are some circumstances that cannot be moved and things that cannot be changed unless we have fasting coupled along with prayer mm. and and also of course with faith and sometimes it's just because of our lack of faith that things are not moving but in this example we can clearly see that it's something that needs prayer and fasting for it to be moved and uh, that's another reason one of one of the reasons yeah. why we need fasting um because sometimes when people come to these kind of passages they think <clears throat> well if there is a demon or like in in this situation like there's a demon possessed am i gonna say well hold on a sec i'm gonna go mm -hmm. and fast and i'm gonna come back to you mm -hmm. but then if you have the perspective of having fasting as part of your devotion yeah. You're always prepared for situations that arise where God's going to put you in certain situations mm -hmm. where not only you, you're mentally um, ready, right? Yeah. Like intellectually, I know the word of God, I know what to say and so on. But you're also spiritually full and satisfied mm -hmm. because personally to me, I feel like when we fast, we are... Um, emptying our stomachs right our our bodies are lacking food but at the same time we're filling our spirit amen yeah. right and um uh, that was jesus saying that in john 4 32 because i i remember when we were speaking about worship mm -hmm. you were mentioning the samaritan woman right um and that worship was in spirit and truth mm -hmm. but after that um after that story the disciples show up literally and and this is what it says um <clears throat> um sorry guys uh but he said to them i have food to eat that you know nothing about 
Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who has sent me and to finish his work. And I understand that in context, he's not speaking about fasting here. Yeah. But there is a sense of spiritual food that, you know, we can fill ourselves with. Mm. And fasting is one of the way that we can come to the Lord and say, Lord, I am here to be filled by you. Yeah. I'm happy to abstain of the pleasures of my flesh, right? And the needs of my flesh. And I'm here and I'm desiring that my cup be overflowed. Yeah. And to, to me, I see that, and, and even from experience, even from experience, that when it comes to fasting, they are some of the best days in my life. And I'm yeah. talking about period, some of the best yeah. days of my life where, <clears throat> And, and and people would say this. People would be like, when I'm fasting, mm. I feel so different. Uh, like being in the presence of God, experiencing the favor of God is just amplified. Yeah. You know, it's just having that unique experience with the Lord. Mm. And to have that part of your devotion, it shows the, I, I guess, the, you know, that l limitless experience with the lord and that growth with the lord that you feel like my life my spiritual life mm -hmm. could be much much better with having fasting in yeah. it it's almost as if because i'm sure you felt as well when you fasted we we have god's attention yeah. when we fast we have his attention he's looking at us he's he's saying okay i i see you i see what you're doing um and that's kind of at times that's why we fast it's just to say god um we just want to show you that we're here for you mm. it's less of us more of you and that's what it is it's a sacrifice and and um i think it should be like you said it should be part of our yeah. daily life yeah. for christians I, I think it's incredibly important so that we're always ready for whatever challenges may arise and um i think i think that's lacking in, nowadays in christianity yeah. I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. I personally disagree with it, sure. but I want to get your intake to it. I know that there are people, mm -hmm. they say, well, I can't fast from either liquids or food. Okay. I would rather fast from not watching TV. Okay. You know, or I would rather fast from not using my phone. You know, <laughs> I don't agree with it personally, but I want to get your opinion because okay. to well, me, um, in the biblical times in ancient times they had entertainment as well mm -hmm. but they never used that as a form of fasting no yeah um so that's why when people ask me about it i'm like well i don't agree with it if if i would consider something to be a fast i would consider it to be something to do with food and water mm -hmm. if you want to abstain from um entertainment uh, that's just being abstaining from entertainment that's okay. that's all you're doing um and it's beneficial for you right well, but i want to get your opinion on it. what do you think the biblical answer is no that does not count as fasting um what is fasting it's first of all what what do humans need to survive what are two essential things we need to, su to survive food water all right and what happens burgers. <laughs> what happens if you don't have food and water uh well you you run out of energy die, and eventually yeah. deteriorate yeah so our bodies run on that our flesh runs on food and water we need that that's our fuel for our bodies to function so in us saying we we are not going to partake in that it's showing god like god we're not we're not like we're not concentrating and we're not even putting our fleshly needs and requirements at, in the forefront it's not even close to being in importance to us you're more important than yeah. what our bodies crave not only crave but need and this is the important part because you what they're saying is crave yeah it's not need you don't need tv to survive you don't need um you know your phone or internet to survive what you need is food and water that's essential yeah. right and sleep yeah. we'll say that to a 16 year old today <laughs> yeah like give me the phone i'd yeah. rather have the phone you'll live <laughs> um and that's yeah. kind of the essential part of fasting it's it's going against your very nature 
literally your nature your nature you have hunger what what is the point of hunger is to keep you alive it's so you know that i need sustenance to survive mm. without it yeah. we would die we would we wouldn't know if we're hungry or thirsty so for you to go against your very human nature puts everything into perspective of how important god is in your life that's the whole point of fasting so no it's not fasting cool. um it, it's it's cool. a sacrifice yes but it's not fasting so yeah and, and you know on that note you know you're speaking about how you know food and water is what you need to sustain mm -hmm. your body right yeah um also that helps me and i also encourage <laughs> others when we talk about fasting is that i'm like if you can have self-control in regards to things that you need in your life then that can also help you have self-control in other areas of your life absolutely because to me mm -hmm. I, I would see it this way if i could put food and water aside for a few days or a few weeks how however the long the fast is could i also put my sexual desires to the side could i put my impatience to the side mm -hmm. you know could i put my hatred to the side and have self-control and be able to do the will of the spirit in my life mm -hmm. so to me that not only is good for the things that you're praying for or asking for and or whatever the case you're fasting for but it can also tap in other areas of your life yes. to say if i can say no to food i can say no to other habits in my life other bad habits in my life yeah because um the two most important things for fasting is perseverance and uh discipline if you don't have those then oh, it's going to be tough so for how in order to have those it's, it's kind of like an exercise for your dis discipline and for your perseverance when you when you fast it's your training it's like a muscle you're training that yeah. so when you go through bad things in your life it's a walk in the park um compared to everything else that you've been through and, and why because you've already been practicing so of course it's still going to be difficult but compared to what it could have been if you didn't have any discipline if you didn't have any perseverance you would struggle yeah it would be a really really hard struggle but i think that's another reason why fasting is important it it, it builds character it builds your perseverance up it builds your uh, discipline up yeah no, it's it's actually pretty important and as you were talking about um you know you it's like a muscle you're training that muscle mm -hmm. i would encourage our listeners um don't be discouraged if you failed your fast you know um it happens it often happens sometimes we we fall into that temptation sometimes we make an excuse mm -hmm. right um but i would encourage you to continue in your fast and as you grow in your faith you'll also continue to grow in your fast and you start to see that to be a part of your regular life right part of your worship part mm -hmm. of your prayer and what many people don't even recognize that fasting can also accommodate or accompany other devotional areas of your life mm -hmm. and we can see an example of that in acts 13 yeah um i'll read that for you guys uh, i've got it uh, here um, and that was basically when the the church leaders were making a decision mm -hmm. in, in the church and this is what happened in acts 13 verse 2 and 3 while they were worshiping um sorry it, yeah while they were worshiping the lord and fasting the holy spirit said set apart for me barnabas and saul for the work to which i have called them so after they had fasted and prayed they placed their hands on them and send them off is to make that decision god reveal to us what your next step is mm -hmm. holy spirit what do you want to do now what did they do they didn't only worship they didn't only pray but they also fasted yeah so it, it's it's not something that we encourage believers to do today mm -hmm. like for example um you're seeking the lord for something yeah just pray about it how often do we hear that just pray about it um you don't get many people say fast. pray and fast about mm -hmm. it and it's mind-boggling for me um to even meet some people 
that have been in the Lord for years, mm. they've never fasted. Yeah. It's like saying, I've been in the Lord for a year or two, but I've never prayed or I've never <coughs> opened the Bible. It is just to me, it's, it's a bit crazy. Yeah. Maybe it's because of the mindset I grew up with, because like, you know, you, you, you look at those biblical texts, you're like, oh, fasting is part of your life and you get to do it. You know, I'm, I'm not sure, but it, it is a bit of a, it's, it's a big surprise mm -hmm. when, when you, you see people that, you know, they, they say, well, I've never fasted before. I, I love my food too much. And, and don't get me wrong. If, <clears throat> if anyone loves their food, it's two of us right here. Yeah. We, we really enjoy our food. Yeah. But we know that there is a lot of benefits to fasting. Absolutely. And um, to put food aside and to put water aside and seek the Lord and say, God, you are more important to me than what sustains my body. Yeah. This, this food. Um, I think that's incredible. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, I, th I like, I'll give an example of, um, of a scenario where uh, I, I this actually happened to me. I, I was fasting uh, for 40 days and uh, I was having liquids and food, but I was, I just cut out meat from mm. my life. And I mean, and any meat. Um, and I, I, I started with the, with the target of, of just being thankful and being mm. grateful to God and just to show how grateful and thankful I am. But um, I made a mistake in my fast and it was, um, I was kind of feeling bad, feeling sorry for myself. Oh, you know, I can't have me. It's so difficult. And when my friends would go, come, come out with me to a restaurant and they'd say, Hey, why aren't you ordering meat? Oh, yes. oh it's, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this fast. It's so, oh, it's so hard. It's so tough. And it kind of made it all seem pointless, to be honest. It may, the, the only good thing that I got out of it is I kind of now have a better understanding of what fasting really is and how to fast properly and how to actually, how it can be used as a, as a, as a weapon against the devil and his plans and his snares that he's laid out before us. And by fasting, we can kind of, you know, destroy his snares and, and his traps that he set up before us just by being faithful to God and fasting. Um, so I, I have a deeper appreciation of what fasting is and, um, and I'm, I'm going to challenge myself to, uh, it, it does remind me of Matthew six. Yeah. <laughs> I read that to you guys. Please, please. Um, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, yeah. for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly. I tell you, they have received their reward in full, but when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Hopefully. And, and I think that's, um, it's, it's a good reminder. I mean, obviously it's going to be a different story if you're fasting with someone mm -hmm. or if the church is doing like a group fast, obviously everyone knows that you're fasting, yes. but if you're having a personal fast, always keep it to yourself. I mean, sometimes like when people offer you food it's and obvious. you can't say no, I mean, you're not going to fabricate a lie. Mm -hmm. You obviously say, look, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't eat it. I'm fasting. You know, um, I, I understand that, but if, if we can actually fast and, and take that to be part of our secret relationship with God yeah. to do it before him. And remember this, as Jesus said, he said, these guys are hypocrites. They like to do this and they receive their rewards. How do they receive their rewards? They're not receiving it from the father. They receive it from men, right? When you mm -hmm. get praised for it, this is yeah. your reward. Yeah. But if you do it in secret, who, who gives you the reward? God. It says, and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So there's like two types of rewards. Mm -hmm. If you want to make it public, if you want to show your spiritual spirituality, right? Oh, look how spiritual I am. I'm fasting. I'm I'm not eating. You guys eat. I'll I'll just I'll just go and pray. Yeah. Um, yeah. You've received your reward. These guys are gonna praise you. But if you're gonna fast and you keep it private um, between you and God, 
then God sees it and he will reward you. And I believe that's the whole point of fasting, right? Yeah, absolutely. Not to look righteous, but to seek God and God having his favor in your life. Absolutely. Um, I, th I think we will, what, what I want to say is for the people that, because you were saying some people that have never fasted in their mm. life, if you're one of those people, um, I challenge you to at least for one day, 24 hours, fast just for 25 hours, just, just to see how it is and just, just be in prayer and just devote that, that 24 hours wholly to God and see where that takes you, see how that, how that changes your life. And I'll be honest with you, it will most likely, and I, I'm, I'm almost certain that it's going to impact you and edify you in such a way that you'd want to do it more often and it will, it will help you in the long run. Um, so I challenge the, the, the viewers here that, that haven't, yeah. uh, the viewers, the listeners that haven't um, fasted before, I challenge you to try. Give it a go. And look, yeah. I mean, it's biblical. The Bible says it's actually for us. Mm -hmm. um, this is what, hap what happened in Matthew 9, 14 and 15. Um, then John, uh, sorry, then John's disciples came and asked him, how is it that we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, how can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he yes. is with them, right? He, uh, the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, then they will fast. And we took an example from Acts 13 that the early church did fast. So for a Christian to say fasting is not for me, that's maybe a personal preference, but it's not biblical. No, it's not. The Bible actually encourages you to have fasting as part of your life. Absolutely. Yeah. And and some people do um, like a, um, they, they might fast once a week, twice a week, or they might um, do something in the beginning of the year or at the end of the year. Um, they, they Sometimes they do plan their fast and sometimes they might come through a situation where they feel like I really need to pay all of my attention, put all of my effort mm -hmm. into this is very important in my life or in someone else's life that are seeking help. Yeah. I will give this to the Lord and I will be fasting about it. Yeah. 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 I think it's uh it's kind of like an amplification of, um, of our devotion. It, it does kind of amplify the rest of our devotion. So if you're reading the Bible while fasting, it's a lot more, it's, it's different. It's a mm. completely different thing. If you're, um, uh, Praying while fasting is completely different prayer. Mm -hmm. If you're worshiping, um, you know, singing songs and just raising your hands, singing hymns while you're fasting, it's completely different. Yeah. And um, and yeah, that's why I think it's uh, it should be part of our arsenal in our you know fight against. Um, yes. Well, what what would you say if someone is fasting and not praying, not worshiping, not praying? That would be just a diet, right? Yeah, just a diet. Yeah. <laughs> so or you're trying to save money, maybe. Yeah, you, you're just basically starving yourself. <laughs> so <clears throat> it's important that you, you can't just come with a mindset and saying, God, look, I'm just going to fast. I'm already feeling grumpy. I'm tired. Mm. I'm hungry. <laughs> that's all I can give you. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not the right attitude to come no. in, into fasting. It's better not to fast and than pray, fast and yeah. do it the wrong way, right? And a good example is in Isaiah 58, right? Mm -hmm. um, in Isaiah 58, they ask a question. Um, I'll try and bring it up. Yeah. Um, this, is, um, the, this is the people asking the question. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? So they're asking this question. They're like, we're fasting. Yeah. God is not answering. We're afflicting our souls. And God is not even noticing, you know? Yeah. But then God starts to point out what they were doing while they were fasting. We can see an example in verse 4. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate and to strike with the fists of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. So God's saying, you are fasting. Yes, you're abstaining yourself from food, 
but you're not changing your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. In fact, you're still continuing to do the wicked things that you were doing. But what's God's acceptable way of fasting? And this is God down the line in, in the chapter. And he's saying in at the end of verse 5, in an acceptable, uh, sorry, um, uh, verse 6, he's saying, Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bonds of the wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? Yes. When you see the naked, that you cover him mm -hmm. and not hide yourself from your own flesh. So there is a way of fasting that God desires in us. And there is a way where we might see as fasting, but in reality, it's not acceptable to God. He, he's not impressed by it. And also, it could be just a diet, right? Mm -hmm. oh, I need to fast for a week. But you're doing it after Christmas, and you know you've gained a few kilos. Come on. We know who you are. <laughs> yeah, and some people do it for tradition. <clears throat> some people do it just True. to fit in. Um, I, and some people do it with a wholehearted belief that they are trying to appease God. But their hearts are doing something else their hearts are somewhere else so the, their mouth claims that this is for god but in their actions while they're fasting nothing to do with god so unfortunately it was pointless yeah true well, well we're coming at the end of our episode mm -hmm. uh this is this was our devotion series we did yes. four parts hopefully you have enjoyed it we are improving on um on the earlier because we've had few issues in the yeah. first few videos. Sorry for that. So yeah, it's 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 getting a bit better. So thank God for that. Uh, we do encourage you to take your devotional life seriously. Without it, you're not going to be flourishing as a Christian. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to overcome uh, the temptations that you have in this world that your flesh offers you, and you're not going to be able to do the will of God. You're not going to be able to satisfy and please God yeah. in your life. So we do encourage you to feed yourself spiritually in the word, to speak to the Lord, continue in your prayers, and to recognize your purpose in worship. Yeah, We glorify God and honor him for who he is. And when you add fasting to that, you get to see how God works in a miraculous way. So any any final thoughts, uh, Emil? No, I think uh, you covered it all. Yeah, well, cool. God bless you, everyone. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take, Take care. care. Take care.